this town is too freaking bizarre for me. Why do you say that? On my way in here tonight, I saw Aquaman on Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> what the f Why would Aquaman be on Hollywood Boulevard? Well, there's a drought. I guess he's homeless. <laughs> You know, Walter, there are a lot of things to like about Los Angeles. Like what? Traffic from hell, highest gas prices in the country, wildfires, mudslides and earthquakes. Yay, I love it here! Dumb <laughs> You ever been in an earthquake? Uh, does my wife falling off of the couch count? <laughs> Oh, it's you, all right. Why are you in a bad mood already? Well, do you know what it's like to wake up and discover that your wife of 45 years has left and isn't coming back? No, I don't. Yeah, me neither, but I can dream, can't I? <laughs> Is it really that bad? Yes. The other day, uh, before her birthday, she started yelling at me, tomorrow I'd let her see a diamond. Oh, a diamond? What'd you do? I took her to a baseball game. <laughs> So does your wife like Hollywood? Yeah, but she thinks it's crazy how many folks in this town get plastic surgery. Oh, she wouldn't do that? Why? Why not? Come on, putting new headlights on a minivan doesn't make it a Corvette. <laughs> yeah, these guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> And the women who get those fake giant hoo-hahs, they don't want you to miss them either. How's that? If you look those women in the eye when you're talking to them, they, they got all pissed off and they go, hey, my boobs are down here. <laughs> I bet your wife likes at least a few things in L.A. Like what? I don't know, the Kardashians are filmed here. <laughs> I'm sorry, I threw up in my mouth a little. <laughs> Kardashians. Hey, who the hell's that new tall chick? She's kind of hot. <laughs> Did I miss something? Yeah, I think so. What the hell are you laughing at? Walter, that's Caitlin. Who the hell is Caitlin? Bruce has a sister? No. <laughs> what the hell's so funny? What, is she available? No, I don't know. <laughs> Look, what does your wife watch on TV? I don't care. Are you guys happy? Look at me. <laughs> well, you still love her. Yeah, of course. But like most marriages, we had been through some difficult times. Sure. But we stayed together because of the children. Oh, you say your, your children saved your marriage. Yeah. <laughs> well, admittedly, a good marriage can be hard work. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know it can, yeah. We went to a marriage therapist one time. Just once? It was a therapist. You didn't like the therapist? Oh, no, he seemed like a good guy that after listening to my wife talk for 10 minutes, he jumped out the window. <laughs> Seriously, absolutely, and if it wasn't for the leash around my nuts, I would have followed the guy. I don't know if you guys remember this. Just three years ago, there was a movie called The Great Wall, starring Matt Damon. It was a real movie. It was Matt Damon in ancient China fighting dragons and shit, and everybody spoke English. It's like, what the f is this? But you gotta understand, I'm not mad at Matt Damon, okay? He's an actor, that's what he does for a living. That's how he gets a check. I get it, I get it. If somebody would have offered me a lead role in a movie called Mount Rushmore, <laughs> I'll play the <laughs> out of George Washington, you know what I mean? <laughs> no shame in my game. I'll play George Washington Carver if they let me. That's a black guy, by the way, I don't know. What Gotta represent, man. I see a lot of people out here in the streets, they wanna come up to me, but they're not really sure. <laughs> There's a lot of debate amongst their friends. They're like, hey man, are you sure that's him? 
If we go up there, we got to be sure. Because if we go up there and it's not him, we're going to look super racist. Are you sure that's not Ken Jeong? I don't know. It looks kind of like Ali Wong. I don't know. And they come up to me. It's always like the first thing they say. Like, hey, hey, man. Aren't you that dude Jing Yang from that show Silicon Valley? And I was like, oh, oh thanks. Thanks. Thank you. I'm like, yeah, 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 thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, I am. And then they're like, oh, I didn't even know you speak English in real life. I'm like, it's called acting. Like, did you really think Matt Damon was Chinese? Like, what's wrong with you? I don't know what the disconnect is. Like, if a white actor does a British accent, he's a thespian. He wins an Oscar. If I do a Chinese accent, I'm automatically from the old country. <laughs> Representation matters, man. A lot of Asian people come up to me, very proud, very nice. They're like, Jimmy, thank you for representing the Asians, man. <laughs> I'm like, hey, hey you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> But you do understand it's not really a choice, right? <laughs> like when you wake up Asian, you can only represent Asians. <laughs> I couldn't just wake up one day, but I'm representing Nigerians today. <laughs> I'm very proud to represent the Asians, but at the same time, there's so much pressure. Like nobody ever wanted to Matt Damon be like, hey Matt, thanks for representing the whites. <laughs> sounds weird. That's like a different conversation for some reason, you know? If somebody came up to me and be like, hey, Jimmy, I'm representing for the whites, I would leave that town immediately and never come back. So much pressure to represent. I gotta be a good Asian everywhere now. I gotta tip everywhere I go? That was one of the major advantages of being Asian, is I can just pretend I don't know how to tip. Y'all know what a Chinese tip is? Chinese tip, it doesn't matter how big your bill is, you tip $2, that's a Chinese tip. That's a Chinese tip, man. Now I gotta tip 20% everywhere. I gotta give every Uber driver a five-star rating just so I can be a good representative. Everywhere I go, I gotta represent. Even day-to-day -day, Even the bedroom, I gotta represent. After I hooked up with this one girl, this is what she said to me. She was like, Jimmy, um, I don't know how to tell you this, but you're the first Asian guy I've ever been with. I'm like, okay. <laughs> what do you want, a fortune cookie? Like, what? <laughs> like, what do you want? She acted like she just unlocked a new character on Street Fighter or something. <laughs> Why do you feel the need to say that? This one girl said this so disrespectful. This is what she said to me after we hooked up. She was like, Jimmy, um, I'm just glad the stereotype's not true. You don't have a small penis. And I'm like, I understand you just insulting my entire race of people. But thank you. First of all, thank you for thinking that I did have a small penis and we still had sex. You're the real MVP. You get two fortune cookies tonight, miss. Mm. Thank you. Peanut, what is wrong with you? NyQuil and Red Bull. <laughs> Will you calm down? I don't think I can. I don't think I can. can, 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 can. Uh, just hold on, take deep breaths. <laughs> Slow it down. <laughs> Are you okay? I think so. Look at me, look at me. You are so cute. <laughs> Okay, Peanut, there's one more member of our family that we need to introduce. Uh, hold it, family? Uh, uh. We're a family? Well, not, oh my gosh. Please tell me I'm adopted. And I'd like to be an Angelina Jolie adoptee. And one who's still nursing. 
I'm sorry, Brad Pitt, that I'm the kid and I'm freaking thirsty. <laughs> My biggest decision of the day would be, mm, let's see, uh, left or right. <laughs> or right down the middle. <laughs> We go from Christmas to Angelina's boobs. I don't know, can you get them for Christmas for me, please? They would be my holiday hooters. You ever put tinsel on a tata? Will you stop it? All I want for Christmas are her two headlights. We and Pitt's gonna be unhappy. You're making fun of his wife, titties. Yes, I said titties. Bodacious tatas. <laughs> if they're little, they're tittles. <laughs> if they're big, they're tatonsters. <laughs> Titzillas. <laughs> Titonics. <laughs> Those are sad, because when they get older, they sink. <laughs> Holy crap, I made you laugh on that one. <laughs> Globes of love. <laughs> You know, I was actually uh, talking about Jose. The jalapeno. <laughs> On a stick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, um, I don't think Jose celebrates Christmas. No? He said, no, they do something called Navidad. <laughs> With some chick named Phyllis. <laughs> Feliz Navidad. Yeah, that bitch. Uh, Bubba Jane and Stan, you've been writing Santa a letter. Yeah, I done it on the computer. Ah, did you mail it to him? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why? My computer won't fit in the mailbox. <laughs> Walter's right, you are a dumbass. <laughs> you know, Bubba Jay, I took the opportunity of uh, uh, printing your letter for you. Uh huh. And uh, I noticed when I printed it that the ink was kind of weird. Uh, that's because uh, I was running out of ink, so I mixed it with beer. You mix beer with the ink? Yeah, and if you smell that thing when you're eating it, <laughs> you get a contact drunk. <laughs> I learned that from Guitar Guy. <laughs> <laughs> beer nog! Beer nog, how do you make beer nog? Uh, well, you take a big old bowl of eggnog yeah, and you pour it down the sink. I need to drink a beer. <laughs> well, Bubba J, I I'm very interested in, in what you wrote, so could you read the letter? <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bubba J, hang on, I ain't done yet. <laughs> Bubba J, I ain't done yet. Bubba J, what? Don't yell at me. You're scaring me when you yell. You, 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 you. <laughs> you remind me of that judge on American Idol. <laughs> Simon. Paula. <laughs> what I meant was, could you read the letter out loud? <laughs> oh, duh. Okay. okay, you didn't say that. <laughs> I go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Dear Santa, hi, it's me, Bubba J. <laughs> That's me, okay. <laughs> Remember, I was the guy last Christmas who lit the fireplace just as you came down the chimney. <laughs> Sorry about your suit and your ass. <laughs> Next time, you should wear a NASCAR suit. <laughs> See, it don't burn. <laughs> he needs fire retardant tidy whities <laughs> You lit Santa on fire? No, damn fireplace did. <laughs> and what happened? Whoosh! He burst into flames like Marilyn Manson at a Baptist revival.
Bubba Jane, that's awful. That's why I'm still in therapy. <laughs> it was hard to hear Santa go from ho, ho, ho to ho, ho, holy shit. <laughs> why didn't you grab the nearest liquid and put him out? That would have been a waste of beer. <laughs> what about water? We don't drink that crap. <laughs> so how'd you put him out? <laughs> I peed on him. <laughs> Yeah, I've added a new step to that list. What list? Stop, drop, and quit rolling around so I can piss on you. <laughs> was anything else going on during all this? Yeah, my dumbass brother was singing on the first day of Christmas. Santa was on fire. <laughs> and Baldo was a wizard on his head. <laughs> on the second day of Christmas, Santa said to me, mm, <laughs> See, his face is all wrapped up in gauze. <laughs> <laughs> Bubba Jay, this is terrible. Well, it seemed like it at the time. Next day, it's funnier than hell. <laughs> we peed on ourselves laughing about it. Like, I'm finally, I'm like quasi-famous now. Nothing's really changed. I might get a free appetizer at select P.F. Chang's. That's about it. <laughs> Nothing's really changed. I was still using Tinder up until like a year ago. This is a true story. But now I realize I got a whole new set of issues on Tinder. Like, like now when I do match with a girl, she doesn't believe that it's me. Like, ugh, that's not you. That's not, you're not that guy from this thing and that thing. I'm like, who the fuck is using me as a fake profile? <laughs> you gotta dig real deep to use me, man. I feel like there's so many better choices out there. One time, one time my agent told me that I had a good look and I'm like, thanks, dude, I appreciate that. But then it took me years to realize that having a good look is totally different than being good looking. <laughs> I still don't know what the fuck it means. <laughs> and look, I'm not being self-deprecating, okay? That's Hollywood talk. I don't, I don't listen to that shit. I understand that in real life, I'm like super good looking. <laughs> if you're into anime. <laughs> you gotta get in where you fit in, people. One time I went over to the girl's house, she, she has this like Naruto anime poster in her bedroom. I knew I was fucking that night. <laughs> you gotta know your demo people. Asian people, we don't need Tinder anymore, we just go to BTS concerts. That's how we do that parking lot pimping. I've been dating a lot of tall girls lately because it makes me look successful. No, no. I, I think tall women are beautiful, but some of them like to wear heels. That's just disrespect. <laughs> I'm like, you're already five inches taller than me. Why the fuck are you wearing heels? And she's like, it makes my ass look better. I'm like, your ass is on my eye level right now. <laughs> Neither of us look good, okay? I look like a child, and you look like a child molester. <laughs> Last time, last time I took a tall girl to this concert. I don't know if you guys know this, but apparently tall people have fun at concerts. <laughs> Are you guys aware of that? I'm 5'5", five five. I just go to concerts to smell other people's armpits. <laughs> like, what the fuck's the point of this? She was having a time in her life doing whatever tall people do at concerts, you know? Jumping around, obstructing other people's views, <laughs> seeing everything. I was frustrated. I had enough. So I just looked up at her. I was like, hey, <laughs> pick me up. <laughs> now, Christmas is a very special time, obviously, and uh, a special time in my house. I have three daughters and a wife, and uh, you know, Christmas presents are always a difficult thing. One of my daughters has a, a birthday near Christmas, and she turned 16 this year, and we decided to get her a car. Now, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I went. But we bought her a used vehicle. Anybody that buys a 16-year-old kid a new car, I think you're pretty much a moron, okay? <laughs> because you're not buying them a car, you're buying them a bumper car. That's what you're buying. <laughs> you ever sat in the front seat teaching a 15, 16-year-old kid to drive a car? Here's the parent in the passenger seat. <laughs> and I'm still in the driveway. Okay. <laughs> so we bought her this vehicle, and you know, as a parent, there's things that you know you're supposed to teach your children and other things that nobody bothers telling you that you need to tell them what to do or how to do or whatever. One of those things is how to put gasoline in a car. 
Now, I didn't have any sisters, but I know that boys by the age of three just innately not have put frickin' gas in a car. <laughs> Girls, apparently, not so much. Now, I will admit my wife is smarter than me, especially when it comes to raising kids, and she knows things about girls, obviously. And one evening, after my daughter had had her car for about a week, my wife came to me and she said very seriously, she said, okay, her car is almost on empty. I'm going to take her, and she's going to put gasoline in her car for the first time. <laughs> and I, not wanting to look like an idiot, pretended I knew what she was talking about. And so I went, okay. <laughs> A little while later, they came back from putting gas in the car. My wife walks in the front door, hands me a video camera, and says, you can't see this. <laughs> and I'm like, what? She goes, no, trust me. You're going to have new material for your show. <laughs> So I rewound and hit play, and sure enough, there's my daughter standing next to her car. She has a door open on the gas tank, and she's standing there doing this. <laughs> Mom, it won't open. <laughs> now, the first indication that my wife can be a very cruel woman when she wants to be <laughs> is what she did to help the child. Nothing. <laughs> she just stood there videotaping. <laughs> then you hear my wife say, honey, remember, righty tidy, lefty loosey. <laughs> and the 16 year old girl goes, whatever. <laughs> Camera starts shaking. <laughs> then you hear my wife say, honey, turn it counterclockwise. <laughs> my daughter looked at her watch. <laughs> and I'm the father standing there watching the tape going, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> because I realized she was looking at her watch two or three seconds too long before she realized she was gazing at a digital watch. <laughs> I grew up very stereotypically, man. I didn't play basketball, football. I grew up playing ping pong. <laughs> Competitively. That was a serious national sport back home, man. You know, I didn't go to any like fun summer camp, space camp. My dad sent me to a ping pong training camp in Guangzhou, China. I almost died. It was a hundred kids competing for one spot on the national team. It was basically Fortnite with ping pong paddles. We took that shit seriously though. My dad would take me to every practice, every tournament game, and he always tried to give me a pep talk before every game. But you know Asian parents, they're way too honest. So every pep talk just turned into an insult. <laughs> like he would come up to me and be like, Jimmy, Jimmy, you're going to play well, okay? Even though you're slow, even though you're weak, and you suck. And then he would just walk away. <laughs> Eventually, I became a good Asian American, and I went to school to get an economics degree. Because that was the easiest degree that can still appease my Asian parents. But then after I graduated, I didn't want to do like econ or finance. So I go, went up to my dad, I was like, Dad, I don't want to do any of this. I, I want to go try and do stand-up. And he's like, what's a, what's a stand-up? You mean like a talk show? I was like, yeah, sure, talk show, whatever you want to call it, okay? But I want to go pursue my dreams. And he was like, no. <laughs> pursue your dreams, how you become homeless. <laughs> I was like, no, no, dad, dad, it's, things are different now. We're in America, okay? In America, we're supposed to do what we love. He was like, no. <laughs> Everyone does what they hate for money and use the money to do what they love. I 
That's that old school Chinese mentality, right? See, I'm like first generation, but my, my parents, they're like negative nine generation because they're so freaking Chinese. Like, it's really hard for me to watch TV with my dad because he's trying to make me explain everything to him. And first of all, all Asian people, they don't watch TV, they judge the TV. <laughs> this is like, I'm just sitting next to my dad on the couch and he's wearing his like old Asian man costume, which is just a wife beater and tidy whities <laughs> He's just sitting there, arms folded, judging the TV light. <laughs> He just makes random noises around the house. Now whenever he sneezes, it's never just a sneeze. It's like a whole tsunami of sound waves that comes after. It's just like, oh, hey, shit. Oh. I was very good at math. That's a big Asian stereotype. I think there's some truth to that, not because of some weird genetic thing, just because our parents care so much more about mathematics and academics, right? You guys seen it? You guys seen those like Kumon Learning Centers in those strip malls, right? Right? Kumon Learning Centers, for you guys that don't know, are basically detention camps for young Asian children. <laughs> you can tell that place is kind of fucked up by the look of its logo. Because it's supposed to be a smiley face, but it's not really smiling. It's just like, man. <laughs> My parents were way too cheap to send me to Kumon. They got a different strategy. They never let me use a calculator until I turned 15, so I can work on my brain function. That's an old school Chinese strategy. You know, so when I turned 15, it was a very special occasion. It was basically my quinceanera. <laughs> my dad just gave me a TI-83+. plus. And he looked me in the eyes, and he was like, you're a woman now, okay? <laughs> but when you're a kid, when your parents tell you you can't do something, what do you do? You rebel, right? So when I was 14 years old, I stole my brother's calculator. I stole Roy Rogers' calculator. <laughs> and I locked myself in my room, and I started rebelling. I started doing math homework. <laughs> Other kids were, like, fucking around with, like, alcohol and drugs. I was fucking up some problems, you know? Locked myself in a room, I was just punching in numbers. I was like, oh man, this feels great, you know? <laughs> it's so wrong, it's awesome. <laughs> my dad was pissed. He was knocking the other side of the door. He doesn't like locked doors in the house. And he was screaming. He was like, Jimmy, Jimmy, what are you doing inside? Come out right now. I know Ying, they're using a calculator. Come out right now. <laughs> I was so scared, I didn't know what to do. And he unlocked the door and he came in. I went into full panic mode, so I just threw away the calculator and I pulled out my pants. <laughs> I was like, Dad, I was just jerking off. <laughs> and he came in and he looked at me and then he looked at the math homework. <laughs> and he was like, good, good, very good, very good. Very good. You must have really like a mask. That's good. That's good. Keep it up. <laughs>